Hello, everyone, and welcome to KenCast. It's wonderful to see you today. If you're watching live or on the replay, we're very happy to have you. Now today, take a second, reflect, and let's, let's be quiet for a second and see if we can hear that tremor that's gone through the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai fandom. That's right. You felt it too. There's a, there's a new movie. I don't know if you've heard. Um, that is going to star both Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan. And we're going to talk about that today. A lot of people have had very strong feelings about this announcement. Uh, some people are very excited. Some people are the opposite. They're, they're angry. So today I thought we could talk it through and, and air our concerns and maybe share our excitement if it exists. Um, but good, respectful discussion today, because that's what Ken cast is all about. And I don't think I could have a discussion like this without uh, the valued opinion of someone who not only is uh, an expert in movies and pop culture, uh, especially from the 80s, 90s, uh, a huge fan of the Cobra Kai series, and uh, just a great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Drew Rohali. <laughs> Drew, how are you today? I'm doing great, Ken. How are you? I'm excited to talk about this. <laughs> I, I, You know, I agree. I'm excited to talk about this. And uh, for those of you who don't know, who are watching and don't know, Drew is co-host of The Last Row Podcast, a great show. He was the first, The Last Row Podcast was the first to do an internet deep dive on Terry Silver from <laughs> Karate Kid 3. Um, just very epic. And so you, Drew, come from a place of longtime fandom of this universe, of the series. Um, give people a sense of your of, of what this franchise means to you. Yeah, so I grew up watching these movies, I think like many others that are part of this show and, and the community here. And I've always really grown up loving action movies and <clears throat> excuse me, these types of films. I love the original trilogy. It's near and dear to my heart. I may be in the minority, but Karate Kid 3 is probably my favorite. Um, I think we're amongst friends here saying that because, you know, yeah. Terry Silver. Obviously, the first is the best, in my opinion, but 3 is my favorite. And uh, just really love love the series. And, you know, I will be, I will say, full disclosure, I have not seen the 2010 movie. Um, I, I saw the next Karate Kid. We saw that together. Um, right. But, you know, the, the new one I have not seen and I am a fan of Jackie Chan. Um, so I don't know. Like, I don't know if my opinion is less or or, or not relevant, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> so no, Drew, your opinion is always relevant, as are yours. Everyone who's watching live, feel free to comment. We're going to get to your comments in just a minute. If you're watching on the replay, if you're not watching live, leave a comment below the video and let us know how you feel. Uh, because this is important for all of us to gauge how the fandom feels about this. Drew, I think this is the first time in the Karate Kid fandom where there's been like some big controversy. <laughs> like this is like the, in the most, force. <laughs> right? A disturbance <laughs> of the force. It's probably it's a Star Wars moment. The Karate Kid fandom, the Cobra Kai fandom, uh, is probably the most chill fandom I, I can agree. think of. Everyone's just so chill, and now. Now it's being rocked. So I, I think that's uh, that's really interesting. Um, <laughs> everyone, let me let me get to your comments. Uh, it's great to see you all today. Um, let's see. AEH, thanks for being a channel member, AEH. Hi, Ken. I was hoping with all the strikes that they had forgotten to make this new Karate Kid film. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, and that's funny and true. We're going to talk about this because we did talk about this last year. This was announced last year. Uh, so the film isn't new, but I think it's who's in it. That's kind of the big thing now. Um, uh, Jasmine, thanks for joining us. Hello to the incredible Ken, the big T. How are you? And how was your Thanksgiving? Drew, my, I had a good Thanksgiving. How, how was your Thanksgiving? It was wonderful. I got to spend it with my wife's family, my daughter. It was great. Had some great food, got to see family and it was really relaxing. So it was a nice day. <laughs> I hope everyone else had a great Thanksgiving too. Yes, indeed. I hope everyone else had a great Thanksgiving. I'm I'm glad it was good for you too, Drew. Uh, Cobra Kai Kid is joining us. I'm excited for this popcorn. 
strip smile. Yeah, we we aim we aim to please. We're gonna have a thorough conversation today. We're gonna go over everything we know and have honest thoughts. Um, Nerd World says hello to Ken and everyone in the chat. How are we feeling today? I'm fine, but I think Ralph will be not lead but guest appearing. So William and the others have the spotlight, but not sure. And Drew, that's gonna be a big thing. Is how does this connect? with the Cobra Kai series, if it does at all. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. It's, um, it, it's crazy. Aurelio, thanks for being a channel member. Hi, Sensei Ken. Yes, it's a total betrayal. <laughs> Kung Fu does not even equal Okinawan karate passed down from Shimpo. Nagi. Very interesting. Yes. We'll have to talk about that. Um, yep. Just before <laughs> yes. Cobra kid, uh, Clifford, great to see you. Thanks for being a channel hey, member. Clifford. Thanks for joining us. Cobra Kai Wisdom himself. What's up, y'all? How's it, how's it going? Uh, my goodness, Cobra Kai Wisdom. It, it's it's going crazy, isn't it? Uh, Kelsey says, I just don't know why you would want to throw this kind of curveball into the franchise when Cobra Kai has done such a good job of bringing it back to popularity. And that's a common feeling out there as well. I agree. Yeah. Um, guys, keep your comments coming. We will, we will get to your comments. Um, a few things we got to do before we start talking today. Uh, I want to throw out appreciation to all the channel members. Thank you so much channel members for being a part of this channel, for supporting this channel and for being part of the chat. Uh, so we are looking forward to, uh, to having a great conversation and that is due in no small part to our wonderful members. Um, including our executive producer, producer today, Tig Terry Silver Rocks. Thank you so much. Um, a couple other things, Drew. This is not related directly to what we're talking about today, but thir uh, Thursday, November 30th, Drew, we are going to have an obliterated watch party. We're, we're, we are going on this channel. Uh, don't know what time yet. We're going to figure that out. If Please, everyone is invited. Put this in uh, your calendar. Uh, Subscribe right now to the channel. Put on notifications. We're going to watch this together. This is the new series on Netflix from John, Josh, and Hayden, creators of Cobra Kai. And uh, Drew, just with your background in '80s action, oh, and you know, like, what, what, what are you? What are your thoughts going into this? I can't wait for this show. Like, first off, knowing that it's from John, Josh, and Hayden, like, and their style of humor, their appreciation for '80s. Uh, just over the top what they've done with with Cobra Kai as as a just sort of a baseline and all the other movies that they've done like I've enjoyed all the other comedies their style of comedy is exactly up my alley it plays to exactly what I enjoy so putting in action over the top ridiculous action on top of comedy I can't wait for this I uh, I'm so excited so I'm, I'm really excited for this one I'm glad that uh, this is coming out so soon Absolutely. I totally agree. Everyone join us, watch it with us on Thursday. You're going to get our first live reactions to all of this. Um, all right, guys. And another important thing, Drew, tomorrow, it's actually your birthday, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Well, Drew, uh, you know, Drew has been uh, a huge part of this channel. He's he's given such, so ama such amazing thoughts. I know so many of you watching right now you. have enjoyed Drew, know Drew, uh, and so I, I think we should wish him a fat, happy birthday. <laughs> and Drew, I know someone else who wants to wish you a happy birthday. So let's <laughs> let's let's do some some birthday singing right now. Oh man. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy oh. birthday, dear Drew. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Thank you, there you very go, Drew. much. That was awesome. Happy. I did not know that was coming. Thank you. <laughs> Thank happy, you very much. Happy birthday, Drew. Yes. Happy, happy <laughs> birthday. You. We've got birthday wishes uh, pouring in, Drew. Thank you all so much. I, I don't feel a day over 25. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. I know. And, and actually, Drew, let's let's go back to a day where we felt very young when we first enjoyed the uh, Karate Kid series. Uh, and guys, I, this all we're going to talk about today is is the news. So let's let's get to the news. Ken cast news. 
All right, guys, time to get serious. What's this? What's this? This came out this past week. This shocked everyone. Just this image. Just this image, Drew. T tell me, what am I looking at right now? It, it just it shocked me just the way that it was shot and looked, too. It just seemed weird. Like, I never expected that we would see this. And I think when the news broke, when we were talking about it last year, it was like, hey, this thing is coming out, but it's not connected to this something else and it was very mysterious and nobody really knew what was going to happen and it was like hey well we're we're sort of expanding the universe and it's it's interesting too because it comes at a time where i would say general fandom is getting a little bit tired of interconnected universes i i, I think at least it feels like that's all out there so i am curious like is this at the tail end of the wave where everything is sort of become this expanded multiverse multi TV show, movie, comic book, everything's connected. Uh, you know, we talk about superhero fatigue and, and Marvel fatigue and all of that stuff. There's a ton of great YouTube esso essays on there. It's just an interesting time. But I mean, getting more Karate Kid, like I can't complain. I'm excited to see what it might be, but I'm skeptical, you know, and I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just not sure what this is going to be. And seeing, you know, Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan on the same screen together is kind of surreal. It's mm -hmm. cool, but it's also weird. I just don't know what to make of it. I don't know. What what was your reaction when you saw this? <laughs> oh, my gosh, Drew. Um, yeah, kind of that same thing. I love the idea of them being together. Like, yeah. I'm a huge fan of Jackie Chan, huge fan of Ralph Macchio. Um, Jackie Chan, in particular, I think naturally has a very kind of welcoming, serene quality that goes well with Ralph Macchio. You know, he, he, he reminds me of Pat Morita, uh, in many ways. Mm -hmm. Um, it, his essence does at least, but there, I see, it doesn't make sense. Like the way they created the reboot back in 2010 is it was, or I'm sorry, it was a remake. Maybe it's a reboot. Remake, I don't know, yeah. but, um, it's, it was a remake, uh, like almost beat for beat of the original karate kid movie, except, you know, they changed it. Um, Jade Smith was in it as Dre, uh, Jackie Han uh, Chan played Mr. Han, um, who was supposed to be a Mr. Miyagi esque character, but there were some differences from Mr. Miyagi that actually, I love Jackie Chan, but I didn't like the character of Mr. Han as much as, uh, Mr. Miyagi for sure. Um, but the way they set that up, it really wasn't, I don't think, compatible with the current universe, let's say. Like, it couldn't mm. work as, like, an alternate spinoff of the Karate Kid movies that we knew at the time. Like, it was definitely its own mm -hmm. thing. So now we have this movie that's supposed to be combining uh, these two universes and... I obviously I haven't read any scripts. I don't know anyone connected with the production. I wish it well. I know everyone's probably going to try to do the best job they can, but um, it seems at first blush a bit ham fisted. Yeah, it does. And I, I think the timing is interesting too, because it was sort of put out there sort of very mysteriously. And then it was, Hey, you know, we don't know much about this. Like we said, it wasn't connected at the time. And then there was the strike, both the writers and the actors strike. And then there was radio silence on all creative projects and not much movement on anything, right? I mean, they can't. And then it comes back and where everyone's super hyped about Cobra Kai, the, the final season, maybe they're trying to capitalize on that and say, hey, you know, while the hype is is high, but in some ways, it, I don't know, maybe this isn't fair, but I think it sort of takes a little bit away from the final season of, of Cobra Kai too. And I don't necessarily love that because the show has been such a, it's been such a great piece of art and, and just entertaining. And it's this final season of this thing that all these people worked on so hard and Oh, Hey, there's this, this new thing. And Oh, Ralph Macchio's in it. Like it sort of feels like that a little bit. And I, and again, I don't mean it in a negative way, but it just, it, I don't know. I, I think it takes a little bit away from something that has spent its time and gotten, you know, put its its dues out there, like all the the, the stuff and the, the things that people have worked towards. Maybe that's not fair because like there's a new creative team here. There's a new set of people working on this. 
I always say this about everything, right? No one goes in and says, let me just mail it in today. Like, I'm sure that they want to make this good. I'm sure right. they're trying to do it right, you know? So I, I'm not sitting here saying like, hey, they're going to do a bad job, right? I, don't, I like to go right. in as open-minded as possible. The timing is just a little weird, and I don't necessarily love that. Like, maybe they could have waited a little bit more, but I don't know. And it's just weird to to put Ralph in it. I mean... Ralph looks badass in that picture, by the way. He looks awesome. Yeah, like, he, say it about the beard. Like he looks great. Like I, I can't believe you know for his, his age, like he looks amazing. And I hope I look that way one day when I'm that, I, <laughs> that age. <laughs> I know. I totally agree. And he I had that so thought cool. too. Yeah, like doesn't he look so good? Like he really yeah. looks even younger now than he, he did does. like seven years ago. Or He's whatever. reverse aging. Um, I don't know, Ralph. How, what's your secret, Ralph? Tell us, please. <laughs> Oh yeah, please if if you want to share us if you're watching Ralph jump into the chat tell us man yeah cuz do look incredible. They both do. Uh so that's really exciting. Um I think so the title the thumbnail of this discussion is betrayal and I want to get into that and I don't mean it necessarily Ralph Macchio betraying sure. anything but more like what does this mean for the show we loved and Drew kind of alluded to this it's a big year. We've got the final season of Cobra Kai. It's been a long road. There's, they have done such a great job. Everyone involved in that series has done such a great job. Um, and then we have this, this is a new thing. And, you know, I, in my video about this, you know, I kind of joked like, what, what, who is this Daniel? Is it the same Daniel that's in the Cobra Kai series? Is it like a doc Brown, like alternate Daniel, you know, that kind of forked off, you know, at some point in the past, he's, not part of the Cobra Kai continuity, but this is like something else. Um, and I thought that maybe what we could do is start by just going over what we know, you know, briefly. I know you guys have probably seen the, um, you know, all of the news about this, all the articles. Here's the original article from The Hollywood Reporter. Um, we've got Jonathan Entwistle's directing. Um, we've got Rob Lieber writing. Um, and in this, they're a little cagey on what this is, but, um, and we'll get to this casting call in a little bit. I want to get your thoughts on the casting call because they, this whole video, the point was to promote this casting call where everyone could submit and to be the role of this new karate kid. Um, so let me go back. We covered this on this channel last year. This was in August before there was any announcement. Nicole here at Murphy's Multiverse did an amazing job back then because they completely leaked this idea for the new movie. And this is the only really summary of what this might be. And keep in mind, this is old. Um, it could have been rewritten, probably has been rewritten, but we might get an idea of the story behind this. And we know this is true because look, it's Rob Lieber mm -hmm. who is writing this new movie. So, so here's, I'm going to read through this, Drew, and I want to get your reaction. Sure. Um, okay. Sony's looking for a 17 year old male Chinese actor who speaks both Mandarin and English and the characters referred to as Lee in the casting announcement. The character's name is Lee Wong. So this is pretty much the same story, the same script. So let's read through this. Um, said to be small for his age, but tough, smart, and scrappy. He's said to be a skilled fighter and a student in Beijing who finds his life uprooted after his mother moves them to Brooklyn, New York. Lee is said to be struggling with a past tragedy, which drives a wedge between him and his doctor mom, who has managed to handle the same tragedy in their own way. And um, I'm guessing, Drew, uh, this tragedy probably has to do with his father, oh, uh, just given given the franchise history. Um, after Lee meets Mia, a student from his high school and her father, Victor, at a local pizza restaurant, <laughs> he'll soon find his life has changed yet again for the better. Lee soon, fi soon finds himself training Victor the, the older father character in the art of Kung Fu, despite his mother's stance against violence and fighting and ultimately back in the ring himself. All right, Drew, what, what's your reaction to that story? I just feel like, so we watched the next karate kid and that was connected, like directly connected, right? Cause you had yes. Mr. Miyagi, Pat Marita in there. 
And they tried to to redo it with a new person, Julie. And and ultimately, I did enjoy that movie. Looking back on it, like I, I did enjoy it. I, I think maybe at the time in the '90s, it wasn't what I wanted. But like looking back, it was interesting. But I just, it's really, and I'm I'm at a loss for words on this sometimes. I don't want to say it's not going to do well because I think it it will. And by attaching the name to it, like I think it's instantly going to have some credibility. But I just, I don't know. I just wonder, like, what is the the point? Like, I don't know. It just, it's weird, right? Especially if, well, maybe that's where the Daniel connection comes in. If there's there, if, if the Daniel connection is there somehow, I mean, it's not in this this writing here. It just seems weird. And then to have the student train the father, if if I'm reading that right, is that? So it's a reverse sort of mentorship, which could be interesting, I guess. It's like a play on it. I don't know. I just, I'm just not sure. <laughs> I, mean, right. I feel bad saying that. I just don't know. It's hard, man. I, I'm, I'm like my, um, my, my, my word. I'm at a loss for words in this a little bit. It just seems odd. That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah. Um, Drew, I remember my first reaction to this and it was that, the story, it sounds like it could be a good story, a very interesting story, Yes, but it's not The Karate Kid. I don't know why you'd call it The Karate Kid. It's it's different enough that it should have had its own title. It should be its own entity. Um, and it felt like they were taking this idea for a story and kind of forcing The Karate Kid name on it. And because uh, Terry Johnson here says, so it's Kung Fu again, yeah. not karate, which Right. I mean, that, that's that was the criticism of the 2010 movie is that they were doing Kung Fu and not karate. Mm -hmm. So why are you calling it the Karate Kid? Um, and, you know, I think that's true. Um, the the uh, Drew Tube <laughs> says, since the guy works at a pizza shop, they could do a lot. Forget wax on, wax off. I can't wait for pizza in the oven, pizza out of the oven. <laughs> I mean, flipping the, flipping the pie, you know, like twirling the dough. That could be interesting, I guess. <laughs> right. But at the same time, Drew, you brought up a good point about him. He's young. So it's like the thing that kind of sounds weird to me is that he wouldn't be in a position to come up with all these new exercises for the father figure because right. he's pretty young. Uh, he, You would expect that from Mr. Miyagi or even Mr. Han because they've lived a full life. They've, they've had time to reflect and come up with these exercises, this best way of teaching. Um, they've had so many years, they've been training their entire lives and they want to share this. They want to be mentors and share their wisdom with, with someone young. And the thing is, no matter how skilled a young person is at fighting, they just haven't had the life experience and the lifetime of training, I think, to be able to come up with like pizza in the oven, pizza out of the oven, you know, in fact, if he's from Beijing, I don't know if he's familiar with pizza too much, uh, you know, and, uh, I don't know. So to me, I don't know. Something's off. It's it's interesting. I mean, there could be some interesting wrinkle, I guess, of a younger person teaching someone who's older something. It's different, right? It's I don't know. In the business world, you you, you hear a lot about reverse mentoring, right? right? Like people always talk about, oh, you know, the more seasoned employees or the more seasoned people could learn a thing or two from the younger generation. And I think there's some truth to that. And it could be interesting, especially, I mean, I don't know how true this will be. Like you said, it's, it was right. sort of leaked, but it's an interesting wrinkle on it, put it that way. And it's not necessarily a rehash per se, but I also agree with you in that, like, what would that person learn? Maybe more about like appreciating life or getting over hardships and stuff from a, a younger perspective. I think there could be something there that could possibly, possibly be interesting, but I think the the thing that the thing that I would want out of this is I would want something that's emotional, something that you know pulls at the heartstrings maybe because of some of those dynamics versus mm -hmm. just like a rehash of hey I'm going to teach this person kung fu and now they're going to learn how to do this and whatnot right like we we talked about sidekicks on this on this show I mean that's another movie that came out around that time different take on it but it was, you know, uh, Barry Gabruski beat up in high school, stuff like that, right? He learned karate and hung out with Chuck Norris. Like, that was cool, 
but it was sort of like a generic karate kid as much as i love that movie you know like it, it's really hard to recapture that magic and it's really hard to take something and just i don't know find that spark and maybe they will if they get the right actors and and actresses but i think you know a lot of it has to do with maybe the the emotional aspect of the story and for me like if they can if they can give you something that's more um you know i don't know like heartfelt maybe i'm i'm for it i don't know it's a really tough one man i cuz i want to be open minded and and i want to and i know that like you said right there's a lot of creative people probably working on this that are putting their heart and soul into it so i want to give it a chance it just feels weird I have this thing where a lot of times, like even when they redid Total Recall, for example, like they remade Total Recall with Colin Farrell. Like, why do you need to remake that? I just, you know, the original is such a classic. Like, why would you need to remake that? And uh, it's just like, I feel these types of movies that come out where they take the intellectual property and it's like, well, at least this is going to get us a base level of of money back. Like, I hope that it's not that way. But as we've seen from the strikes the studios are trying to make money rightfully so i mean they're businesses but i don't know it's i feel conflicted i guess if you guys can't tell i'm conflicted on the whole thing <laughs> it's right very conflicted well and another thing too is that this we read the story outline can you see an opportunity based on that early outline for a story for daniel larusso or Mr. Han to come into the story because it feels like this thing would need a total rewrite. Yeah. I mean, unless Mr. Han is running the pizza shop, like I don't, I don't know. Or Daniel is like a patron at the pizza shop. Like, I don't know how that would, would be. It's just odd. I mean, I, I don't What year was this article written? Was this last year? I can't remember the date of it. This was um this was in August of 2020 August 10th 2022 2022 okay okay so this is a month before the movie was announced I'm sure that it'll change especially if they at that time weren't sure maybe they had Ralph on board or Jackie Chan because I mean even if you look at the news at that time we were told directly hey it's in the universe but it's not connected so right. I'm sure that it'll it'll change especially with the way that they have Ralph and, and Jackie Chan now marketing it, it's got to, it'll probably be different. I would be surprised if it wasn't reworked at least minorly, mm -hmm. but it's probably got to be, I, I can't see how they would come into that story based on what was written in that article. Right. And um, I will, I will bring this up and we can, we can talk about this um, a bit more throughout, but um this is from Gizmodo. They say another good piece of news here is that it turns out while the team behind Cobra Kai isn't directly involved in the project, they've been part of the process. Sony Pictures Television produces Cobra Kai, and since Sony Pictures is making the movie, Cobra Kai creators John Hurwitz, Josh Heald, and Hayden Schlossberg have known about known it's happening and have mm -hmm. offered assistance when asked. A source close to the project tells the team has seen and given notes on all iterations of the script and Entwistle speaks to them often, which is great news. They know and understand Karate Kid better than anyone. So if they're supportive of a film, that's a huge bonus. But Drew, I have to ask, why don't you involve them from the very beginning? Um, it's so bizarre to me. I understand, obviously, studio politics. Uh, you know, Sony television is different from Sony motion pictures. Um, yeah. but you know, we did talk about Jaden Smith, um, starred in the 2010 remake and Will Smith, his production company owns the rights to all the karate kids. So, um, the movies and Cobra Kai, you'll, you'll see him credited in Cobra Kai and Jaden Smith credited in Cobra Kai too. So like, there's definitely knowledge, um, of everyone who works on this thing. And it's just so bizarre to me why you wouldn't start with John, Josh and Hayden, uh, and at a very early stage um, and, and work with them. Um, I, I don't know. And the thing is too, guys, like I've seen discussions about the notes and that's a good thing. However, um, if, if someone's giving notes, obviously it's this new creative team that's in charge. It's their yeah. decision whether they want to accept the note or not, you know, um, unless John, Josh and Hayden are producing, unless they're actually writing, like they may take some of what they have to say or they may choose to go in a different direction. So I think that's a way of the studio or 
people at the studio kind of saying, hey, it's okay, don't worry. But they're not really officially involved, John, Josh, and Caden. Yeah, I think you're right because, and, and they're probably looking, I mean, I don't want to put words in their mouth because I don't know what right. they're thinking, but it could be one of those situations where they know what's happening and if they care so deeply about the source material and stuff, they would probably feel like if they had an opportunity to provide notes and they don't, if they can course correct it in any way or affect it in any way, like I think it shows how much they probably care that, that we know that they care about the source material and the universe as a whole. I mean, look at how many years of their life that they've poured into this and, and really all of the creative energy that they've done and they've created something so amazing, right? So it's, it's like, you almost don't want to see that get tarnished in a lot of ways. So by providing notes, you would hope that they're, you know, trying to affect it in some way. And who knows what the studio is going to accept or not. Like to your point, it could be a check the box thing of, yeah, well, we asked for these people's opinions. Hopefully they, they, they take it seriously because I mean, we've said this a lot of times on this channel. They are one of the few, I think, creators that have taken something that was so beloved and, um, really revered and done such a great job shepherding that to a new generation of people. And I think, you know, there's not a lot of people that have been able to successfully do that. And for the most part, get critical acclaim. Like I, I think right. that in general, the fandom within Cobra Kai doesn't have a ton of negative things to say about what's happened. Right. Whereas if you look at something like star Wars, right, every generation has something to say about, that whether it's good or bad and it's very polarizing for whatever reason you look at even the saved by the bell reboot that came out years ago like if you're a fan of that show i mean how do you how do you take that to the new generation i don't know but the girl meets world remake like i loved boy meets world growing up and saved by the bell and those types of shows like they aren't even on the same level as as this like it's not even close and again that's not to take anything away from what those people did it just shows what a great job they've done here. And I think, you know, for me, that's where it's like, you just hope that <laughs> I wish they were involved in this more other than providing right. notes. I don't know, man. It's, it's, uh, I hope that we give some new people a chance to, to show what they can do. Um, and, and hopefully that's one of those things where we're pleasantly surprised and say, wow, this is really great. Hopefully that's what it is. And I'll try to approach it with an open mind like that, but I just, I appreciate what John, Josh and Hayden and all the other folks within the creative team have done that. It's hard to watch something new. That's like, oh, do we need this? I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. It's like quit while you're ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's tough. And to everyone, anyone who's watching this now, who's part of this new movie. No, I, I want it to be amazing. I yeah. want it to succeed and we don't know them. They could love the series as well. They could mm -hmm. love the movie series or the TV series as well. Um, they could be wanting to do the best job possible. And right now, uh, we've got a comment from Dave Srock, who's an amazing filmmaker and DP, DP of Cobra Cole. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Uh, Dave says, will the rest of the cast only do scenes together via green screen as well? <laughs> uh, and this, this is the, this is the thing. Okay. How does this fit with the Cobra Kai series? If John, Josh and Hayden are giving notes one reason could be that they're trying to maybe give advice on ways that the events of this movie could fit in with the chronology of the Cobra Kai series. Mm -hmm. um, that the reasons why maybe Daniel would do something if he's in the show, you know, how, what, what would explain him going to Brooklyn um, and hanging out with Lee, I guess, I guess, um, we, we don't, again, we, I guess we don't know how him and Mr. Han are going to come together. Um, the only thing drew that might make sense is back in karate kid Two, Mr. Miyagi talked about his ancestor, Shimpo sensei, uh, who brought, who lit, who was in China yeah. who brought the secret of Miyagi family karate to Okinawa. So there could be, which could be cool for fans. The, it sounds like it'd have to be a total rewrite of the script, but um, where Miyagi is somehow related to Mr. Han because he uh, Shinpo sensei had a family in China, like he got married and had kids in China and came back to Okinawa. 
So it's possible that Mr. Han is related to Mr. Miyagi. That could be I don't interesting. Know. What do you think? I mean, it, it could be cool. It's like, that's the only way I can see it connecting outside of them being acquaintances or meeting randomly. Like, I, what, what would you prefer? Would you rather they be related or would you rather they be, hey, they met each other through some stroke of luck? I don't know. I'm not sure which one's better. <laughs> I love the idea of Mr. Han or Jackie, the Jackie Chan character being somehow a very, very distant relative of Mr. Miyagi, because I think it would bring in all of what we know and love about Mr. Miyagi and kind of maybe funnel it into that character if it were done the right way. Right. Um, and would give them a bond, would give Daniel and Mr. Han a bond. And I'm sure he would be blown away by meeting a Miyagi-esque person, you know, because he's been missing Mr. Miyagi so much. Um, and someone who would have that same wisdom passed down uh, to him. I'm, sh I'm sh like, I think there's a lot there. Um, but then, Drew, is this movie about them or is it about Lee, the kid, mm -hmm. and Victor mm -hmm. at the pizza restaurant? I, I, don't, I don't know. That's that's the trickiest part because what you said there about, you know, Daniel obviously doesn't have Mr. Miyagi around anymore. He means so much to him and he meant so much to him. If you have someone else that could sort of create, even though they're, I don't know how old Jackie Chan is compared to, to him in this universe. So that would be interesting. But like maybe he could find another person that he could connect with on the same level that he had with Mr. Miyagi. It wouldn't be maybe the same mentorship or the, the same level of respect. But I think that would be really cool. And I think that could be a really emotional bond that they could create. And for the viewer too, as the audience to say, okay, now you have like he, he missed him and now he has somebody that he can connect with on that level that has some type of history. He understands the things that Mr. Miyagi taught him, or he understands, you know, at least the generational knowledge and wisdom that, that he had passed down upon him too. But to your point, is it about them or is it about Lee? Because right. I would rather watch a movie about Daniel and and him discovering Han. And like, I'd rather watch that actually. Give me that movie. Like, I don't yeah. need like another rehash of the student. Like, and that's why I like Cobra Kai so much because yes, you get the next generation and you get the the, the students and the children but you're seeing it through the lens that you want to see. New viewers are going to probably watch it through the lens of, you know, like the younger characters, old fans and old viewers are probably going to watch it through the Mr. You know, Miyagi type lens or the Daniel lens. Right. So I don't know. I just don't feel like I need to see Lee and another student taking on this mantle when I've got so much of that through the show. That was great. That I, I don't I don't need another random student. Like I, I don't know. This is how I feel about it. Yeah, it's it's almost like we've the Cobra Kai show has given us, I don't know how many, dozens yeah. of new karate kids. Like dozens of new students, uh, potentially. And it's uh and such great characters. I you, you know what I would love to see, like if they did a a uh, movie kind of spinoff of the Cobra Kai series. I'd love to see a movie version where mm -hmm. we do get Jackie Chan, the Mr. Han character come into it somehow. Like sure. Maybe uh, like that would be a fun addition. If you wanted to make a theatrical experience or something like that, where he comes into the Cobra Kai world. Um, but here's the, here's the other thing. What's Daniel doing in Brooklyn? I assume if he's going to be part of the movie, unless it's a cameo, they did say starring, you're right, in this video, they said we're starring in a new Karate Kid movie. Um, so if it's more than a cameo, he's going to have to be in Brooklyn for a while. Um, and of course, his family was in Newark, uh, you know, which, you know, it's not too far geographically, but sure. uh, it's it like, that's, you know, as you know, from that area, I mean, that is a whole different, just, <laughs> just a whole different through there city. the other day. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Um, and so like, what is he doing in Brooklyn? Um, it would probably you know, have sure. to be like visiting relatives or something, right? Like, I don't know if you're a fan of Cur Curb Your Enthusiasm, but they had Larry David fly back out to, to New York for 
you know, a, a season or half of a season at one point, and like then he met up with a bunch of people, and like it was the only way to sort of explain it. Like I, I think that that'd be the only way to do it. But then to your point, it's like, okay, I guess that's a good way not have to not not to not have to show his family and all the other characters that they've created. Get him out of right. California because okay, where is everybody? Oh, well, they're back home. They don't have to explain that. It could be a throwaway line or something. But it's probably like a family visit. Maybe maybe there's a funeral or something, right? That he has to go to, and he shows up, and mm -hmm. I don't know some emotional event or something. Which, which is weird, Drew. I will it say is. it is. I, I agree. That's the probably the right way to do it. But if it's something big enough for him to go for a certain amount of time, or if it's a trip where he's going to see family, which is a good reason to go. The Cobra Kai show has his mom and his cousin Louie having moved to Southern mm -hmm. California. If it's a big deal like a funeral, uh, why wouldn't Amanda and Sam and Anthony be going with him? You yeah. know, um, and why would he be? He's got LaRusso, Otto, and his entire family. Uh, why would he be leaving them for an extended period of time? Like, I'll, it's weird. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Here's something that they could do that I would instantly be out on. And I haven't thought about this until right in this moment. And I'm okay. curious what everybody else thinks about this. I'm thinking about this and knowing that we don't know much. Could it be possible that they ignore the show and just do an offshoot of the movie universe? Like I never even considered that. And if they do that, I'm not going to love that. And I don't think others would either. So, but I, but like they could. And especially when people start talking about multiverses, it's like, oh, well, you know, the show doesn't exist in this universe. This is another universe where they bring together Mr. Han and, and Daniel. But like that would be I don't I would not like that. I wouldn't like it. I don't think a lot of people would. I just I don't know. I would want to give everything a chance. But if they were to do that, I don't know that I would be so interested in in checking it out, to be honest, because that would feel like a cash grab, in my opinion. Right. Uh and, you know, Drew, that that's a possibility as well. You know, I, I was thinking about that, you know, in Back to the Future 2. And this might be the like the the blending of the yeah. Karate Kid franchises and the Back to the Future franchises <laughs> when Marty McFly um, or when I Biff Tannen stole the sports almanac and went back in time uh, and it skewed off. Uh, perhaps we'd be in the alternate 1985, yeah. Daniel, and going up that timeline. I yeah. And I agree with you. I'd be out, too, because. And I, I think that doesn't make sense from a franchise standpoint. And I, and that's why I hope they don't do it because you could have these crossover. If you're having spinoffs on Netflix, potentially of the Cobra Kai series, and you have uh, this new movie with Jackie Chan in it, um, you would think you would want access to that story for future movies, but also like spinoffs into series and it's like you'd want it to all go together. I would, I would yeah. think. I, I think. See, here's the thing, and and this is where I get a little bit frustrated with this whole stuff. Nobody's asking for this movie, and I get that. Like, you can't just please the fans all the time. Like, I understand that, but like, people are asking for a Miyagi prequel, and I think that could be done in a really respectful and awesome way. You want to give us a universe? I would love to see that, and I would love to see that as a movie. I would love to see Dynatox, right? Let's see Dynatox. Yeah. Like that's the kind of thing that like you know people want, but I guess that you have to maybe be more of a hardcore fan to appreciate that. And when you're thinking about the studio, maybe the studio is saying, well, this isn't gonna make us money. But if we put the name of Karate Kid on this and we put in, you know, Jackie Chan and, and Ralph in this, then yeah, it'll make some base level of money. Like I just think that I would rather see them expand the universe that they already like have in, in and I, I know that this is part of what they have too, but like this story is so ripe for telling a Miyagi prequel. And so many people would love that. I think that would do so well. Like I think people would really appreciate that. There's so much story there that hasn't been told. And I think that could that could be a really good thing. The Dynatox stuff, like we joke about it, but I think it would be really good. Like we've seen succession, we've seen, you know, billions. Like those types of shows mm -hmm. could work. Mm -hmm. And like doing that in the eighties, like you heard, you guys heard Hayden talk about it. Like that would be awesome. I would love that. Like that's yeah. the kind of spinoff and, and prequel and whatever that I want to get. Even the, the show with, 
you know, young John Kreese and young Terry Silver. Like we've seen the actors who play the younger versions of them do a great job. Like I would love to see that. Like Nick does an amazing job with Terry Silver. Like I would love to see that. I, I think that's the kind of thing that I would like to see. I mean, I'm selfish here that I think right. you guys would too, but I don't know. It's just weird. Like the reception to this across the fandom too is kind of interesting. It's like, it's very lukewarm, at least from what I've seen. I mean, I'm not an authority right. on it, but it seems a little bit lukewarm. I think whereas these other shows would get people really excited. So I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm skeptical. <laughs> I'm skeptical. Well, thank you guys for your amazing comments. Let's, let's hear from some of you too. Uh, what, what do you think about all this? Morgan F says that sounds like a way more interesting movie than Whatever the description they previously given with that Lee character. Well, thank you. It did. See, it drew. It only took us like five minutes and we, <laughs> sorry. Um, again, everyone who's associated with this new movie, I know it's like, it takes so much work to write a script. And I know that all these people involved in them, they put their heart and soul into this. Um, and we hope it's good. Uh, and we, we're rooting for them. So. We're, we don't want to make light of the work that everyone's doing on this new movie. And we want to give it a chance, but we're just speaking from our current state sure. of fandom uh, of what we'd like to see, I guess. Um, Supremo says that the movie can somehow shed light on Daniel's on what Daniel's life was like before coming to the Valley, that that would be cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Could this be at a time? Could they go be, be going back in time before the events of go back to his roots? Robert Guy? Yeah, yeah, that could be really cool because then you're exploring the backstory of him and where, where he grew up. How did he become who he was before they went to California? Like that could be really cool. I would I would appreciate that. Right, right. Um, and Supremo says maybe Daniel has some family in Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. um, I just want to know, Terry says, if the movie is AU and this is a different Daniel verse, he isn't married to Amanda or if this is the mm -hmm. same verse and Daniel is just visiting. Right. And, um, drew, you know, you mentioned how good Ralph Macchio looked. Um, if they wanted to do this where he, the events of Cobra Kai haven't happened yet, if they're going back in time, um, and doing this before the events of Cobra Kai, I think he could probably pull it off. That could um, be interesting too. Yeah. Because, it doesn't maybe that's another way to explain it and and they could do that and and just because he's in the movie doesn't mean he's a starring character like he's got you know 80 percent of the screen time because if they are introducing lee and these other characters i just don't know how you're going to have all these people playing like a major role in it, it, it it's going to be I mean, that's a hard job to try to write that script and to try to put those, you know, all of those stars in there. I mean, you, you see movies like The Expendables. It's like, how do you give people all the screen time? I know it's a different kind of genre, but the same great movie. Love The Expendables. But it, it, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, if it was a bit of a prequel, I think that could also work. And I would like, but see, give me a prequel of that. Like that should be the movie, not, Hey, there's also this other person in a pizza shop. That's going to train somebody else. Like, I don't need that. Like, give me Daniel exploring his past, his roots. That's going to be cool. I would love that. <laughs> well, Drew, you and I have in the past talked about the idea of having a discussion from a, an industry perspective on the idea of brand damage like um and this is happening right now yeah. uh, with hollywood and i think it's catching up with them where uh they're green lighting these projects because they have brand name recognition and they're just plowing ahead and making movies because the name gets fans existing fans to come in but what they're doing is they're somehow out of touch with the dna of what that franchise is and they're putting out a movie that's really not really attracting new fans and kind of ticking off old fans. And it's really not helping the prospects of the franchise going forward. And is this a case where we're kind of, you know, slapping the Karate Kid name and maybe even some of its former stars onto a project that's not really organically coming from that universe? It certainly feels like it. And, and, it's what you said, right? I know it's so early. So yeah, to anyone that may or may not be involved, like we're just speaking from the heart here as people that are moviegoers. <laughs> I mean, I'm a casual moviegoer. I just, I don't know. Like it's what we were saying. No one's really 
asking for this movie and maybe they're going to get something great. Maybe they're going to be like, wow, I never knew that I wanted that. And I'm glad that it was made. Or maybe it's going to be, oh my God, here they go again. Like just slapping a name on something. I mean, we've seen that so many times. I mean, it just happens so often in Hollywood these days. And like, I don't know. I was, I was just messaging you, right? Like I watched a, a movie the other day called the creator. And I don't know if anyone's seen that, but it's like, these movies don't really exist anymore where it's new intellectual property. And I know that if you've seen that, you know, one of the criticisms is, Oh, it borrows from all these different things in the genres. I know it's not critically acclaimed, but I really enjoyed that movie and it was new characters. It was a new setting, something new. And I was like, wow, you don't really get this very often. Do you like everything is, is a franchise. Everything is a rehash. Everything is, you know, and it doesn't mean that they're all done well. So, it, it's mm -hmm. it kind of plays to that too where it's like where's the new ip that's coming out now i'm a fan of the karate kid universe so i can't complain about getting something new within it but i also think we're allowed to be skeptical of it as somebody you know who's watched this show and watched the movies and i mean people didn't really like the next karate kid and that was something that was new within that universe and they had mr miyagi in it so right you can't i guess be surprised that people are thinking hmm I don't know about this guys like what is that you know it's different right. and even even when cobra kai came out like it looked awesome because they had you know william in it and when the when the trailers came out it had like a different spin on it but it was so connected to the existing universe where it's like okay cool like that joke about maybe maybe daniel was the bad guy and they took that and, and ran with it and you right. could tell that there was a lot of love and, and heart behind it but it was connected in a way that expanded what it what was there Maybe that's what they'll do here, but with what I've read, it, it's hard to see that right now with introducing all these new people. Uh, I, 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 maybe I'm not being fair to it, but I I have to be truthful to myself here. I've got to be I got to be honest with you guys. That's just how I yeah. feel. Yeah, I and and that's great, Drew. And thank you, thank you for for being honest. And you know, I want to be honest with all of you as well. Um, you know. I will go see this, and uh, I love the idea of Mar Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan being together on screen. But, but yeah, I have a lot of the same concerns as Drew. AEH, thanks for being a channel member, says, "What do you think if Jackie plays Mr. Han as the Karate Kid in 2010, based on there being a movie Mr. Han and the real Mr. Han?" See, this this is where it gets confusing because even in season one of Cobra Kai, uh. Robbie and Daniel talk about Jackie Chan, the actor, right? So Jackie Chan as an actor exists in the Cobra Kai universe, but now Mr. Han might also exist in the Cobra Kai universe. So you're saying a, that Jackie Chan, the actor played a character, like in the, in the Cobra Kai universe, like Mr. Han was a character that Jackie Chan played <laughs> like a, like a, that would be, I mean, I don't know that they would go there, but that would be cool. Right. <laughs> I love Jackie Chan. Yeah, we we are we are veering towards sci-fi and the Miyagi verse, and uh, <laughs> that that could be really interesting, Drew. We never knew the Karate Kid was actually a sci-fi franchise. Yeah. Uh, Jaws has an important question. The next Karate Kid maybe is the son of Terry Silver and Mamona. <laughs> <laughs> This unknown kid with Mamona and uh, the kid and Danny boy wants revenge against Terry who wins the Sakai Taikai and Cobra Kai season six and probably Jackie Chan will help them. Jaws. Love it. That's great. Man. And, you know, I have to bring this up, Drew. I have to bring this up. What would Terry think? So 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 now whatever Daniel's up to right now, could you see Terry shaking his head going, Danny, Danny, Danny? Yep. And Danny what, what what is Terry thinking? when he's looking at all this uh mr han going to brooklyn what 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 does terry silver think of this Drew? i mean as a businessman he's probably trying to find some type of angle here that he can play uh you know the terry silver looking at what the studio is doing he probably loves it because it's it's making money but terry silver within the universe maybe he's trying to find a way to, to to go to brooklyn he's probably got offices there there's probably some type of of office there that he can go visit and, and try to wreak some havoc on it and i look let's be serious terry could take them both he could whoever lee is he could take him too yeah. and he could take the 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 old man in the pizza shop he could take mr han like we've seen <laughs> this right we know there's no we know <laughs> he's, he's got him <laughs> not even close <laughs> we we know we know yes i i agree um 
and and that's the thing like this movie if you if you put terry silver in this new movie uh i i would automatically 100 percent yeah. be on board with it. i me mean too. that that is one way to get to get me fully on board <laughs> me too. um I, yeah and maybe the sequel will get into what what terry does to everyone who knows um so many great comments from you guys um yeah Kristen says it makes a really good point the next karate kids are already hawk miguel tori mm -hmm. and samantha i wish we could just focus on how awesome these characters are I instead agree. of branching out to millions more before season six uh and let's talk about that drew the timing so this is has a release date and we won't get into potential non-ratification of the SAG uh, contract. Uh, we'll, we'll wait to see what happens with that. Uh, but assuming this goes forward, they want to release this on December 13th, 2024. Which to me sounds like Sony or whoever might be aiming for a December release date for season six. Yeah. Maybe to release them both at the same time. Um, but what is going on here? You alluded to this before, but do you think there could be some kind of bad cross impacts of the fact that you have this movie coming out that may or may not be good um that may add to the excitement for cobra kai or may make people go oh i don't know or may maybe daniel's arc in this and whatever happens in this would that sour what is intended for Cobra Kai season six. Is is there a problem here with uh, the proximity of these things releasing? I think it, it's certainly dangerous, put it that way. I mean, I think there's going to be a base level of people like you and me, we're going to watch Cobra Kai season six no matter what. And I think there's people that are five seasons invested into a show that they love. They're going to watch it no matter what. But a casual fan, maybe the studio is banking on Hey, they can market. Hey, there's this awesome show that we had. There was six seasons of it. Here's the final one. Oh, by the way, there's this movie coming out. Go check them out both. But I think if people go and see that movie and it's not something that they enjoy, they're probably not going to want to watch the show because they're already like, if you haven't seen the show at this point, you're probably not going to start unless something else brings you into it. Maybe season six and say, Hey, I heard about the show, but it's been on long enough that a lot of people are talking about it. So you've had a chance to kind of check it out. Maybe there's people on the fence. And I think the ones that are on the fence would be the ones that would be negatively impacted by the movie. I don't think the movie is going to go sway them to go watch the show now, especially if they're not connected. Like, I think that the ship has sailed for that. It's like, you're either going to watch it or you're not. Uh, I think it only has, negative consequences and it might tarnish like hey this show that was so awesome and this movie if the movie is not well received or it's mediocre or whatever it may be it's like eh, eh. especially after like we were saying right. before there was so much time and energy put into the show and and then the strike delayed everything and and it's like it deserves the respect especially for the final season like i just feel like you don't mess with that i don't know it seems a little it just seems a little disrespectful in my opinion if i'm being honest it just seems a little disrespectful right uh, you know it, listening to you talk i feel like i am starting to really sympathize with the people responsible for making this movie yeah. because it feels <laughs> like they have got the deck stacked they against do. them uh they do. think of like even if they did just a normal karate kid sequel you know you talk about the next karate kid Every Karate Kid sequel that comes out will be compared to the original, mm -hmm. you know, which is a classic. And usually that's the, that's the refrain. It's like, ah, what, what's the point? It's not even as good as the original. You know, we heard that with Karate Kid 3, Next Karate Kid, you know, etc. But the thing is now everyone's going to be watching this. They're going to be comparing it to the original Karate Kid movie. They're going to be comparing it to the Cobra Kai series, which, as you said before, is critically acclaimed. And that's that's very unique. And everyone probably who's interested in watching this new Karate Kid movie will have seen Cobra Kai and probably really liked it. And they're going to watch this movie and compare it to both the, mo the original movies, the remake, depending on how people like that, and the series. And that is an uphill battle, I think, for the creative team in this movie. And it feels like they're unfairly off <laughs> kind of like yeah. on this island trying to make a movie that needs to do almost an impossible thing and please everyone but somehow exist in its separate 
universe. And people are going to have these questions like, well, I enjoyed Cobra Kai. Where are all these characters? Like why, wh what's it's going confusing. on here? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's confusing. I, I just, I don't know the thinking behind why they approached it like this and why they didn't make this an organic offshoot of Cobra Kai still have Jackie Chan, but yeah, really yeah. have John, Josh and Hayden involved from the very beginning. Well, also just the timing, like, they don't need to put it at the same time. They could do this and just do it after. Like, I don't know that the show is going to make the show is not going to make this movie successful, right? The show to me is going to be successful regardless of whatever happens with this, this movie, right? Because people are already invested in the show and, and they put time and energy into, you know, growing with a lot of the characters. I get that we have Ralph involved in this and, and Jackie Chan, but it just, the timing, like you said, it just seems like it's it's making it harder. It's like playing on all Madden mode. If if I'm like, why make it harder for yourself? Just wait a little bit longer. And I I, I guess the thought is, hey, we're going to capitalize on the popularity of this. But it's also like you, you're you have a lot of things going against you at this point too. It's just weird. I mean, I I think about I've, I'm on the record of saying this. Like, I did not like the Ghost Ghostbusters reboot from I think was it 2016 or whatever. Oh, like, answer the I, call. Yeah, like I just did not like that movie. And I liked the people involved in it. I think that they're very talented actors and actresses. I like Paul Feig. I like, you know, the Melissa McCarthy, like these other actors and actresses. But it just felt like, like, what are we doing here? Like, I don't, it just didn't need to be made. And I feel, and I'm sure a lot of effort and, and energy was put into that. Like nobody half-assed that or anything. I don't know that anyone's going to, you know, half-effort this either, but you said it best it's like the deck is stacked against them and there's probably a lot of really talented people working on this but i think you know i would love to know where the idea came from because i think when you look at the idea of the show and the passion that was behind the idea of like we love this so much that we want to make this thing and here's the story that we want to tell and we have a way to connect it to the universe and we we feel like you know there is uh, you know, Johnny Lawrence's story wasn't fleshed out enough and people need to know more about him and what's going on behind the scenes there. Like there's clear passion behind that. And that story was made not because it was going to make money, but because like they're, they, the story needed to be told. And the, you know, those three guys had a great idea and a great way to, to take it forward. If someone has that kind of idea for this movie, great. That would be awesome. And I would love to hear more about what the idea is that sparked, hey, we should make this because. That's what I think could get me on board with it versus like, okay, I'm mm -hmm. kind of skeptical. Because if there was a great idea like that and there was somebody that's like, there's just so much more to tell about Mr. Han. Like there isn't this connection that was told about his connection back to, you know, Daniel. And someone had a lot of passion behind that. I could get, I could get on board. Like that would right. do it for me. I think I don't. I don't know if if that resonates with anybody. Yeah, I, I, Drew. I think you you put it very well. There could be a hook. There could be a hook that will explain everything and make it great and make it cool. And uh, I, I hope that's true. Um, although it's interesting because it seems as though if what we read from that report was right, we have a movie that is very different from the original karate kid which actually could be a really good movie mm -hmm. in its in its own right but it's like i don't know if it was intended to be a new karate kid movie or yeah. the studio liked the script and they're like let's make this into a karate kid movie and then they're like well actually let's go ahead and and start adding jackie chan and ralph macchio into it and now it's going to turn into a franken movie uh yeah. that is not what the original inspiration Cause, was because that's also like a challenge right like look at I, I know people don't love him but i'll just use Zack Snyder for an example right he went to lucasfilm and had an idea for a star wars movie and they didn't like it so he went off and sort of did his own thing so now they're going to make that rebel moon show like in some ways whether you like him or don't like him or you like his movies or whatever you like this movie that's going to come out like it's close enough to maybe star wars but it's something different and I think like you don't have the weight of like the Skywalkers on your shoulders. Like in some ways, like I would almost be really interested in seeing a movie like like we talked about sidekicks earlier. Like I love sidekicks yeah. that wasn't in the Karate Kid universe. And it was cool right. because of that. It was different characters. Like if you took this character of Lee and you made this emotional story about someone who's teaching this older guy that had a loss, 
like or, or whatever like you could do that and you could do it in a way that's original and and it it moves people or it gets people really excited but instead you're sort of creating this pseudo connection to these these this universe and you're creating all this baggage that you have to find a way to write around and write in unless it came from an idea of hey this is how it's going to be connected and i just have to make this movie but it seems as almost they're trying to shoehorn the characters and continue this universe versus hey there's this really cool idea about this you know younger student that works at a pizza shop and does whatever right like i i think it's almost like it's unfair to this to, to creative sometimes where they have to shoehorn things into a broader universe where you could have a standalone property that could be awesome, but it's not allowed to breathe and it's not allowed to be its own thing. So that's also the other challenge of this, right? Where maybe this could have been a great movie. Maybe it still will be, but it's mm -hmm. also we're all approaching it with such skeptical, you know, opinions on un maybe unfairly. I don't know. Right. I think you put it very well, Drew. And it's like, the expectations it's like i think the studios want to have it both ways they want the predictable box office yeah. from a known property right but at the same time those expectations can crush a concept that creatively probably would have been better if it were free and uh independent of that franchise um, you know, and it's like limiting these new stories. Maybe if they had done this as not a karate kid movie, but its own thing, yes. you're right. It's its own universe. It's its own story, new characters. Um, and maybe people would say like, it's reminiscent of the karate kid, but it's its own new thing. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird to, to kind of crush it with these expectations yeah. of a franchise. And they could even put like from the creators and, and the studio that gave you karate kid, if you want to put right. that on it, right? Like you see people, you get like a, uh, you know, Quentin Tarantino produced this film or something like that. Like you could attach names to it or you could have someone out there like promoting it that is involved in this universe to say, Hey, you know, we put the heart and soul of the originals into this. It's something different because we want to give you something new and interesting. And, and we want to take the essence of what made this original movie great, but we want to put it to original characters. And I guess, you know, because that's the thing, like if you made the the Karate Kid remake and you called that something else, I also would have been more on, on board with that. But mm -hmm. the fact that they called it the Karate Kid and they tried to make a rehash of the movie, like a remake, I instantly was like, eh. No, thanks. And I liked right. Jackie Chan, but I just was turned off immediately. It felt like a cash grab. Whether it was a good movie or not, they sort of set themselves up for people to judge it and fairly or unfairly. But that's just what you do when you try to to put that stamp on it versus making it something new and attaching maybe other creative names to it or saying we have the essence of the original. So I don't know. It's 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 a tough one, man. I feel for the creatives, though. <laughs> yeah, I I know I do too. And, uh, I think you brought up a really good point about the remake, the 2010 remake with Jackie Chan, because, um, I've seen it and maybe we can watch it again. Sometimes yeah, Drew. It's I would sometime do it. Drew, and we'll, we'll have a discussion about it and see what we think. But, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but from my perspective, that was the problem with it. It was very well produced. In fact, you could, the production value is probably sure greater than any of the other karate kid movies like it was very well produced you have jackie chan i think uh jaden smith did a really good job in that movie um you had the script almost the exact same story and script as the original mm -hmm. which was a classic and it's just interesting how to me it had all of those things but it it just it had no soul and the characters didn't impact me and i didn't care for it because everything about it reminded me of the original which i thought was done so much better and i love yeah. the characters so much more and this just seemed very hollow and so you can throw just very talented people you can throw a lot of great production design and money at, at something uh even you know a good script and it still can come out just hollow and I don't know. You you wonder if that might be what's what's happening um, yeah. now. I mean, I need to be fair because I mean, I just haven't seen it, and I know that's maybe blasphemous to some folks. But like, it there, I had this sort of thing against it unfairly, maybe from the beginning, and I just was like, I'm not interested in 
watching this because I don't want to watch somebody just take this and maybe make it some into something else. And and that's me being maybe the old man yelling at a cloud. I don't know. I, I and like I watched the new Ninja Turtles movie. I know some folks are talking about Ninja Turtles, but I really enjoyed the new Ninja Turtles movie. And I think it was mm -hmm. probably the best one since the originals, even though it was an animated version, but I liked it so much better than the previous incarnations of it. I think the first Ninja Turtles and the second one are, are great movies. The third one is one that I think a lot of people would like to forget, but I really liked the new movie. And I think it, you know, you had Seth Rogen and others in, involved in it that like, were fans of the right. original you know it wasn't just like a business thing for them and and i think you could tell when you watch it like it was a really fun enjoyable movie that had the essence of the original but it kind of took it and did a little bit different it wasn't sort of like a rehash if that makes sense at all mm. yeah that's i still have to check that movie out it's i'm, very I'm excited i'm very excited uh based on your description um Ostro, thank you so, so much for the super chat, Ostro. Thanks for supporting the channel. Could Cobra Kai season six be doing a time jump with the new movie happening in between? Since it's still 2019 in the TV series, maybe that's the way. And yeah, Drew, I mean, it could be an interesting time. The thing is this, for the sake of the series, I hope the time jump isn't after the events of the Cobra yeah. Kai series. Because I don't want to see what Daniel's up to after what we haven't seen <laughs> you know i hope it's either sometime during the series or before the series if this is the same daniel uh yeah. in the same universe i, I agree with what, that. Do, what do you think i liked your idea earlier too and some other folks had said it but like before 2019 i would like that right. better because then it might because then it doesn't invalidate anything in the show or they don't have to do right. jumping through hoops to try to say, well, where is everybody? You know, I, I think it would be more interesting to to see it sort of pre Cobra Kai universe would be the way that I would want it if that's what they're going to do. You know, I agree, but now I'm wondering, would that not make any sense? Because if he has this amazing meeting with Mr. Han, maybe they have a connection and Mr. Han's still out there. Why, why hasn't he ever talked True. about Mr. Han and why didn't he call out Mr. Han when he's having problems within the series? Uh, I don't know. It's weird. A tragic death, maybe. I don't know. But then <laughs> then maybe he's buried in New York and, you know, Miyagi's in California. But that I think that, yeah, that would be tough, man. I, you're right. They're, they're just, let's see, this is why, like, I go back to it. It's like, why? <laughs> why what are we doing? Right. Like, let the right. show breathe. And I feel it's like, Again, like I'm not trying to take anything away from people, but it, it, it's just like you have this show that's like critically acclaimed. You got this final season that's coming out. Like, let it have its day. And and I think like this is just another. I don't know, and maybe I'm in the minority on that. I I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody, but I I, I should take more stances here. I, I'm told I I down I go down the middle too much, so I'll be I'll be, I'll say what I'm thinking. I don't know, Drew. I I think you've taken a lot of great stances today. <laughs> I. I I agree with you. Um, Peter Vonisak from Cobra Kai hey, Companion Peter. and Obliterated Companion. Hi, Peter said, I thought the remake was a really good movie. My Twisted problem Companion was, <laughs> oh yes, that's right. Um, <laughs> my problem was Jaden and the love interest was too young. Right. And uh, also the bullies too young. Um, I, I, I thought that uh, there, there's something about Pat Morita going up against the Cobra Kais who are all towering over him are younger and look like they could yeah. really damage this old man, right? Versus Jackie Chan looking somewhat youthful uh, and beating up on kids shorter than him. Like, it's just, there's something really off about that. Like, oh, this yeah. this man is is beating up these children. You know, it's it's just, I don't know. That, I think that's where, it, I don't know. We, we, Drew, I don't want to give anything. <laughs> we can talk about this when we watch the movie. but um. But uh, so, guys, oh, my gosh, thank you for so many amazing comments. We um, uh, I'll bring this up from Jay Wigan. <laughs> I hey, hope Jay. the movie's not <laughs> set during COVID. <laughs> well, you're right. Maybe it could be COVID. I'm, I, I don't know. Oh, um, <laughs> but, Drew, I think we've got to run for today. But what I know is there there's so much to talk about coming up um and any topic that we've talked about today we could probably dive in and do much longer conversations about this um 
we'll we'll have to look at the remake again and kind of assess what do we think of the character of Mr. Han? How is this going to run up to, you know, the new movie coming out? I I think though this seems like it's rushed. Uh, the movie they want to get it out quick, and I think it is because of the season six of Cobra Kai coming out. They probably want to. Yeah, which is which is too bad. I mean, I, I would love to talk if we do this again. I would love to talk more about the casting call, too, because that's a whole other yes. interesting aspect of this. That's like that also makes it feel a little weird. It's like a game show. And it's like I, I don't want to say that too much because it's like, OK, you give somebody else a chance and it's not maybe like nepotism from Hollywood or something like that. So that's cool. But I hope that they actually are going to look for somebody that's you know <laughs> new but it just feels weird like the whole even the commercial just felt very odd just felt odd is all i'll say maybe that's a way to sum it up yeah it, it did feel a little odd um i heard they already got ten thousand submissions and i'm just thinking who's gonna go through ten thousand videos Nobody. like that's so much time you know what i mean like ah oh, i i mean it it's it's a fun idea, but yeah, we'll we'll talk more about that. I'm yeah. sure we'll hear news about that and what's going on. Drew, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. Everyone watching, thanks so much. If you're uh, chatting in the live uh, chat, uh, thank you so much. And then also, if you're watching on the replay, comment below. Don't miss the obliterated watch party on Thursday. Be sure to subscribe, notification bell, so you can join us and watch with us. We're going to be watching it for the very first time. Uh, so please join us on Thursday and uh, also follow the last row podcast. Drew is co-host of the last row podcast. It's absolutely amazing. If you're interested in the discussions we were having today, you would be very interested in the last row podcast. Uh, he and Badway do an amazing job. Also check out our Ghostbusters two discussion. Uh, pr pretty incredible. Um, so Drew, thanks so much. And um, I hope you have a wonderful birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much for that awesome video. That was hilarious. And I was a little surprised. And thank you to everybody in the chat for the birthday wishes. It's so great to, to to talk to you all. And I'm happy to talk about this stuff any day. So thanks for having me on, Ken. It's always a pleasure. Absolutely, Drew. And I look forward to talking to you next time and seeing all of you next time on KenCast. Want to be part of the live KenCast show? Subscribe to the Ken Cole YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get alerts about every new show. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time on KenCast.